Today, I'm gonna show you how to make the ultimate homemade pumpkin pie. <sighs> Get back here. <laughs> hey everybody, it's Natasha of natashaskitchen.com and you guys are gonna love this pie. It is simple to make and it is worth it to make your own because the filling is so creamy and then that crust, crisp, flaky, buttery perfection. I'm gonna show you how to do this the right way and you'll never want store-bought again. This is so good. So let's get started because I want some pie. I'm using one disc of our amazing homemade pie dough. I do have a video tutorial on how to make this and I will link that in the notes. This is the only pie dough recipe you will need. This dough has been chilling in the refrigerator and we're gonna roll it out. Dust your work surface with flour, then roll the pie disc into a 12 inch diameter circle. I love that you can see the bits of butter in the homemade dough. That means it's going to be flaky, buttery, and so good. Move the dough around every now and then to make sure it's not sticking to your work surface and roll it into an even circle. We're gonna transfer that to a nine inch glass pie pan. I will link to my favorite glass pan in the notes and whenever I'm pre-baking a crust, I love using a glass pan because it heats up really well and you can see through the pan to make sure that the crust is done. Here's our favorite trick for transferring a pie crust. Loosely wrap it around a rolling pin, then simply unwrap it into your pie dish. It looks like I had just a little bit too much flour on my work surface, so I'm gonna dust that off real quick with a pastry brush. Now center your crust right over your pie pan. Mold your dough to your pan and make sure that you're pushing it in from the sides rather than pushing down in the center because you don't want to stretch your dough. You do want some overhang on the pie crust and you can use some scissors if you didn't have a perfectly even center to even out the top. Our goal is to build up the crust so we can have plenty of crust to crimp the edge. Tuck in the excess dough to create a thick border. And the process of crimping is really simple but will make your pie look really fancy. To create the fluted edge, push at the edges with two fingers on one hand and using one finger on the other hand, push the dough between the other two fingers. This process takes less than a minute but will make your pie look professional. Now this is super important when pre-baking your crust, you wanna make sure it is fully chilled. So we're gonna cover that and put it in the freezer for 30 minutes or you can refrigerate for one hour. Once that crust is ready, you're gonna preheat your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. A properly chilled crust will feel very firm. Now we're gonna put pie weights into the center of your pie. When pre-baking, pie weights will help keep your crust from sagging down and bubbling up at the base. Cut a piece of parchment paper into a circle to fit your pie pan, then wrinkle it up well. This will help it ease into the pan so that the weights can form around the crust. You can either use traditional pie weights, and I'll link to those in the notes, or you can just use a pound and a half to two pounds of dry beans. You wanna fill it 3 fourths full with pie weights. Pour the dried beans into the parchment paper, then mold them to your crust. Now we're gonna blind bake or pre-bake that pie crust in the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for 17 minutes. You wanna make sure the crust starts to turn a light golden brown at the edges. Next, we're gonna remove the pie weights very carefully because there may be some hot steam and you can keep those beans to use again for another pie or to use in a recipe that calls for dry beans. You'll notice once you take the beans out that the bottom might start to bubble up. You wanna poke all over the bottom with a fork. The little holes will allow any trapped steam to escape and will keep the crust from puffing up. Here's another little trick to keep the crust from getting soggy. Take a little bit of raw egg white and brush it over the base of the hot crust. The egg white will help seal the crust. Now we're gonna put that back in the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for another five minutes or until the bottom looks dried. Once the crust is pre-baked, remove it from the oven and set it aside to cool completely before making your filling. Also, good news, you can pre-make that crust a day or two ahead. 
Now that our crust has cooled, we will make the filling. We're using a 15 ounce can of Libby's pumpkin puree, and this is our favorite brand. We have experimented with others, and we just keep coming back to this one. It has great color and flavor, and it produces a thicker filling, which is easier to bake. The filling is super easy to make. In a large mixing bowl, combine 15 ounces of your pumpkin puree. Next, add one whole egg and three egg yolks. The yolks give it a super creamy and custard-like consistency. Next, add half a cup of packed light brown sugar, one fourth cup of granulated sugar, a teaspoon of pumpkin spice, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of real vanilla extract. We do love our homemade vanilla extract. It's just two ingredients and I will link to the recipe in the notes. Whisk that together until it's well incorporated. Now, last but not least, add 12 ounces of room temperature evaporated milk. This gives the pumpkin pie a smooth, silky consistency. Whisk that together until it's really well blended and you've broken up the air bubbles with your whisk. Just like with the cheesecake, if you have any big air bubbles in your mixture, it's more likely to crack. Now pour the pumpkin pie filling into your pre-baked crust and bake that in a preheated oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 55 to 60 minutes or until the pie is nearly set in the center. You can insert a knife into the center and if it comes out clean, it's ready, but doing that does cause the pie to crack. So I like to give it a little jolt, should be completely set on the edges and have just a slight wiggle in the center. Once that's out of the oven, transfer it to a wire rack and let it cool completely to room temperature. Our pie has been cooling for a few hours and we're ready to make a whipped cream topping. In a large mixing bowl, add one cup of heavy whipping cream and beat that on medium speed until soft peaks form. Next, add three tablespoons of granulated sugar and flavor that with half a tablespoon of golden rum and half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now you can add the rum to taste, but a little bit goes a long way. Continue beating the cream on medium high speed until medium stiff peaks form. I like to beat just until it's stiff enough to keep its form when it's piped with a piping bag. I'm gonna transfer that cream to a large pastry bag that I have fitted with a large open star tip. You can pipe that over the full pumpkin pie or pipe it over individual slices. That rum infused whipped cream literally takes two to three minutes to make, but makes this pie next level delicious. Once your pastry bag is primed, it's time to serve the pie. All right, our pie is cooled down completely to room temperature. Our whipped cream is ready. All that's left is to serve this up. And I'm excited because <laughs> I am just crazy about pumpkin pie. I fell in love with the store-bought pumpkin pie. That's the first one that I ever tried. And then I made a homemade one and it was just like knock your socks off good. <laughs> I'm telling you, it is worth every minute to make your own. Just incredible. Let's do this taste test. All right, and one of my favorite tricks, just like with the cheesecake, is to take a damp paper towel and in between slices, wipe off the knife. That way you get really clean cuts. Okay, here we go. And this comes easily out of the pie pan, which is really nice because it serves really pretty. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, what I love about this pie is you really get to enjoy the filling because it's like a custard, a true custard. It's so yummy. And then the crust. Okay, this crust is not soggy like you would get in the grocery store. It is crisp and buttery and irresistible. I seriously love the crust just as, um, just as much as I love the filling. All right, and then we are going to add some whipped cream to finish this off. I cannot wait to dig in. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay, pipe a generous puff there. 
You can also spoon it on if you want to. All right, here we go. You ready? I'm ready. <laughs> oh, look at that, it is so creamy. Yum. Mm. <laughs> mm. It is perfectly seasoned. I love the combination of pumpkin pie spice with some extra cinnamon. It's really all you need. And then the extra egg yolks in here really make that custard texture amazing. It's so decadent. All right, and I didn't get any cream in that bite. I don't know if anybody else noticed, but I did. <laughs> I'm going in for bite number two. Oh, look at that. It is so smooth. Mm. Mm. All the pumpkin dreams coming true right there. <laughs> this is the ultimate show-stopping Thanksgiving pie. I'm extra excited about the crust here because, I mean, just listen, it's like a little crunch here. It's almost like eating a really good pastry. Mm. <laughs> it's the same crust we use for all of our pies. It's so easy to make. We have a video on it. Make sure you check that out. Watch it, you'll be a pro in no time. And the best part is you can absolutely make the crust ahead of time, even one or two days ahead to make your holiday pie making even easier. <laughs> I hope this becomes your new favorite Thanksgiving pumpkin pie. And we'll see you in our next video.